Paint splatters on screen revealing a series of images, a woman playing violin, then in a bright pink costume, then in a blind skier pinning atop a mountain. The paint drip splatters revealing text in print and braille, unsightly opinions. Hi, welcome to Unsightly Opinions. My name is Tamara. Today we are going to be talking about why accessible technology or accessible devices are so expensive. We're going to talk about some of the many reasons that contribute to that high price tag, some industry solutions that might help ease the burden on the end user, and some ways that you can still afford to buy these kinds of products if you're struggling and you need them in your life. They aren't all great answers, but at least it'll give you some information if if you're looking for something really specific. So without further ado, let's dive straight in. Why is it so expensive? For most of us, we live in a world that is driven by capitalism. The prices are often dictated by market forces. So those are your supply and your demand. As disabled people, because we need more specific technology, because it's a smaller market, because there are less devices, because they're more tailored, more specialized, it reduces demand so the price automatically goes up. It's also a lot more challenging to help balance the costs of research and development across millions of devices when you may only sell 10,000. So again, that cost into developing the product is passed on to the end user. Something like an iPhone, which sells tens or hundreds of millions of devices, can spread the hundreds of millions of dollars of research or development costs evenly across those millions of devices, making it a lot less of a burden on the end user. Something I have noticed in particular with the disability community is there seems to be a lot more middlemen, more steps in the supply chain process than you see with a lot of other goods. For something like an iPhone, you'll probably have your manufacturing chain look like the producer, which is a factory either owned or operated or licensed by Apple. Then you can buy it from the Apple Store, so it's a very short supply chain. Absolutely, there could be more people in that supply chain, authorized resellers and all the rest of that, but oftentimes the more people you get in that supply chain, in that loop, it's going to start hiking the prices every single time there's another person involved because everyone wants their cut of the pie. So in the case of a lot of accessible tech, medical devices, there's the manufacturer who actually produces the product, then you have distributors, then you have resellers, then you have vendors, and then it finally ends up at you. So there's a lot of steps in that chain before it ends up in your hands. And with many products, it has to go through a vendor. And you better believe that that vendor, because it's a very specialized ticket item, is going to mark it up significantly. And that leads to what I like to call the disability tax. It is an unfortunate but significant markup on the manufacturer suggested retail price or MSRP. If you've been watching some of my videos recently, you know that I talked about the true costs of disability and that accessible devices are more expensive, but we didn't get into the reasons why. We know that the MSRP is beyond what's reasonable because for most corporations, they aren't philanthropic, they aren't charities, they're more concerned about their bottom line than getting the end user the product that they need for a reasonable price. So it leads to price gouging, and because it is such a small market, you don't have the power as the consumer to say, no, I don't want that, I want something better, because there's less of that product available and there's less competition. While I don't live in the United States, I still feel that I am falling victim to many of its shortcomings in its healthcare system. Because the US is built the way it is, because of the way the insurance companies operate in the States, and because a lot of the accessible tech that I'm able to access is built and created in the States, it's assumed that insurance companies are going to pay for it. That's not the case where I live in Canada, but because it's following that system from the States where it's assumed that a lot of tech, a lot of products are going to be covered by insurance, manufacturers can charge whatever the heck they want and you're just going to pay for it because your insurance is going to cover it. Or hopefully it's going to cover it. And that leads to bloated pricing and it's not fair. It's it's not fair to the consumer that has to pay full freight for these devices. If you have a physical disability like blindness, oftentimes your insurance company isn't going to deem whatever accessible tech you need as quote unquote medically necessary. 
So they aren't going to pay for your braille display. They aren't going to pay for your Perkins brailler. They aren't going to pay for your OrCam. They aren't going to pay for a lot of the devices that are going to make your life better and make your quality of life better. So you're stuck in this odd position of, well, if I needed a wheelchair, that would be covered. But because I'm blind, oh, uh, what's medically necessary? A white cane. We'll cover your $40 white cane. So it leaves a lot of people in this very complicated system system of trying to navigate bureaucracy that shouldn't be there to whatever accessible tech is going to improve their daily life and quality of life. And finally, it's just that it's a captive market. If you need these devices, if you have to use them to get employment, to safely do things in your home, to survive, you're going to pay whatever it takes to get this device into your life, whatever it may be. And while I'm using a lot of blindness examples, it truly relates to anything, whether you have a physical physical disability, a mental disability, you need a healthcare aid. There are so many different costs that can really add up quickly when you're stuck in a position that you have no power. You are captive to whatever exists. And oftentimes those solutions aren't perfect. Now, I wanna talk about some of the solutions and how that's going to improve the situation, hopefully in industry and some things that could help reduce the bloat and reduce the price tag on the end user. One of the things that the World Health Organization suggests is frugal innovation. So it's not putting all of the bells and whistles into the device. It's trying to use what's already available to try and help as many people as possible. And I don't have the specific figure in front of me right now, but I believe it was something like 60 to 70% of accessible technology that's presently on the market could be done by smart apps on your phone. Most people have access to a smartphone, so buying a singular device that can do all of the things rather than needing to buy individual devices is going to reduce the cost overall. When I'm talking about frugal innovation, I don't mean that there can't be standalone devices. There absolutely should be. And I don't mean that things that are being made should be cheap garbage. What I'm saying is that we need to make more economical decisions so that it can benefit more people. My second point is going to be that wherever you are along that supply chain, manufacturers, resellers, vendors need to have a fair MSRP or retail price. Everyone's taking a 150% bump every time it goes through another person. It's not going to be affordable by the time it reaches the end user. If you're just collecting the product and shipping it off to the next person, you don't need to take a 150% bump. Reduce the number of middlemen involved in the process and allow more people access to buy directly from the manufacturers. There are many products where I live that I do not get access to despite how beneficial they are for for me without going through a vendor. And there is a single vendor, not multiple vendors that can have competitive pricing differences. There is a single vendor where I live that I can buy from, which means they can make the price whatever they want. So having more competition in the space is vital for a market economy to work, and it's vital to help reduce that cost on us as the end users. If we can create more excitement in the design space, that's going to go a long way to bring new people into the accessible tech development market. We need to be incentivizing people, and I don't know what the solution is here, whether it's government incentivization programs, whether it's grants, bursaries, tax breaks, I don't know what the solution is. But if we can get more people interested, again, it's going to help reduce the burden on the end user because it's going to create that competition that we so desperately need. Anything that can be made accessible through a smartphone app should be made accessible through a smartphone app. So again, incentivizing developers to help create those things and make them possible. Universal design. So if you're a mainstream manufacturer and you're building something, make it accessible for as many people as you possibly can. Not only are you going to maximize your profit margins because you're not alienating one eighth of the global population. When we create something that's universally accessible or as close to universally accessible as we can, it makes a difference to people's lives. And they're going to feel that. They're going to have that brand loyalty towards that product. And they're going to want to keep coming back anytime they need something new if you put that effort in. And finally, I want the onus to be put on big tech. Places that have the budget to invest in accessibility, places like Apple, Samsung, Google, 
Microsoft, and while they're doing some of it, there's definitely a long way that we could go. So if we can put that on big tech, it's going to go a long way, again, to help broaden that R&D cost across all of the millions of devices that they might be selling and make it more accessible for the end user financially. So now the final section, if you want to buy something that is very pricey, you need this accessible device, you need this technology, and you can't afford it, how are you going to buy it? Some of these are not good solutions, but they are options. So bear with me as we go through this. I am a firm proponent of use what you already have as long as it's still functional for you. It's not an ideal solution, but it's better than buying the brand new item, the high ticket item, if it's going to do relatively the same function with a few extra bells and whistles. This is not a solution. It's save up and pay for it out of pocket. It's going to take a long time. It's going to be frustrating. It means sacrifice and it's not ideal, but it is an option. Look for grants, bursaries, or funds in your area. There are technology and accessibility grants, whether it's March of Dimes, Red Cross, there are many things globally that you can tap into if you're really in desperate need of a particular device. In addition to charities, and I know that can be a sensitive topic for some people because they don't want handouts, they don't want to rely on charity, but that's why charities exist. This is a financial burden that goes above and beyond what is reasonable for the average individual. Take advantage of the programs because oftentimes there are large pots of money that are going unused because people aren't applying because they're too proud. Also look for government programs. While there's a lot of red tape typically involved, a lot of assessment, a lot of hassle, it can be worth it in the end. If you can get through that red tape, if you can stick it out, you will end up with a device. Maybe not the exact one you wanted, but it's going to be at a significantly decreased rate. I know in the US there's a lot of caveats to that. You must be in school or you must be applying to school or you must be applying to work to get any of that tech, but still it's, it's not the end of the world if you have to go to school for a couple of semesters to get all of the technology you need in your life. There are also all kinds of disability specific organizations that are there to help give you the tools, give you the skills, give you workarounds when you can't afford things. So in Canada it might be the CNIB, in the US it might be the NFB or the AFB or the RNIB in the UK. So go to those organizations, ask them what's available because they will know what programs are going to best suit your needs for the specific disability that you might have. And a caveat with that, ask for everything in the kitchen sink. Ask for whatever you can get. Don't be shy. Don't think, oh, well, maybe I'll need this. Maybe I'll need that. Get everything you can possibly get because you're probably only going to have that one opportunity. So load up. You may not get all of it, but you'll probably get some of it. So ask away. It doesn't hurt. You can also ask for accessible technology through your work or school programs. There are additional programs outside of blindness organizations, outside of disability organizations that account for that. There is a duty, at least in North America, to accommodate people with disabilities. So ask through your school, through your work for those accommodations and they will be put in place for you. There are government programs to help subsidize those costs for employers. So while some are less understanding, it is something worth addressing with those individuals if you can. And then we come to secondhand products. Secondhand products are going to be really great if you can't afford the brand new thing. I have bought many, many secondhand items. My embosser is secondhand. My first braille display was secondhand. Just about every piece of technology that was a high ticket item, I had to buy secondhand. So don't be ashamed of buying that. They're still good products. They may not have all of the new features and you're going to get them for a fraction of the cost of something that's brand new. If you are looking for that, there's lots of accessible tech buy and sell groups. There's the blind buy and sell group. Look on there, post on there, ask for what you're wanting, and maybe somebody is already trying to sell it and they'll see it. You can also check places like On Shops and Kijiji or Craigslist, and they're going to have a variety of things listed on there. It might take a while to find what you're specifically looking for, but you can set up a notification so that anytime something with that tag is listed, you'll get a notification for that. And my second to last point is watch for giveaways, raffles, watch the company's webpage, different events that are trying to promote that product and you can apply to enter. Again, small chance of success, but worth it if you're going to get a multi-thousand dollar device for free. And finally, it's looking for the low cost alternatives. If you can't afford the expensive device, what's going to do you in the meantime? If you can't afford an OrCam, is Microsoft Seeing AI going to do it for you? 
Maybe. If you can't afford a Perkins Brailler, is a Slate & Stylus going to do it for you? Maybe. While it's not the ideal solution, it's something that's going to really help you get through that rough patch until you can get back onto your feet again. So I'm hoping that some of these points were helpful, that it gives you some insight into why accessible tech is the way it is, and I hate that it costs so much and I wish that things were different and maybe someday I'll be able to start an organization that gives away these products at cost, but I'm not in that position right now, so hopes and pipe dreams for the future. Maybe somebody will get there first. I'd be delighted. If you use accessible tech, are there any points, any tips that I missed, anywhere that you consider buying them for lower cost? Please leave those down below. We want to help as many people as we can. That's all I have for you today. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Despite its more serious tone, I hope that we can continue to improve accessibility in the long run and demand that universal design, and eventually we won't need to have this conversation anymore. If you enjoy content like this, please consider liking, commenting, subscribing, engaging down below or on any of my other social media accounts. But that's all I have for you this time. See you in the next one. Bye for now.